Okay, so welcome to part two of TSI Math Section Review. If you missed questions one and two, just go back to my previous video, TSI Math Section Review Part One. You'll see how questions number one and two are done. Now we're gonna go into questions number three and four. And these are a little bit more challenging, but I hope that you stick all the way to the end so that you can see how these problems are done. So question number three, find the equation of a line passing through these two points. So let me bring up question number three where it could be just by itself. All right, so it says find an equation of a line that passes th through these two points. So I have to bring in some outside knowledge of what an equation of a line looks like. Sometimes on the um, reference sheet, they'll tell you what the equation for a line is. Hopefully they will, but if they don't, I remember that slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So on your piece of paper, please just write down the slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. The m stands for the slope of the line and b is the y intercept. Okay, y intercept is a point on the line that goes through the y axis. And it's usually written like this. We have a point where it's zero for the x, and then y can be any value. So if you look at these two points that they give us, do either of those two points look like they are the y-intercept? If you guess zero comma zero, then you are correct. In this um, equation, in this line, zero comma zero is our y-intercept. So B is gonna be equal to zero. So we already figured out one piece of the equation. Now we have to figure out, okay, what is our slope gonna be? So again, I have to either look at my reference sheet and hope that there is uh, an, an equation for slope, or I'm gonna have to use my outside knowledge, which tells me what the equation for slope is. So slope, or M, is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus x1. And I hope this isn't the first time you guys are seeing this equation, but if it is, it shouldn't intimidate you. It's very simple. So we have two points. We have 0 comma 0 and we have 6 comma 9. So this point is going to be our 1s and then this point is going to be our 2s. So this is going to be x1, y1, and then this is gonna be x2, y2. Now that we have all of our um, points labeled, we just have to enter it into the equation. So y2 would be nine, and then y1 is zero, so nine minus zero. <clears throat> then we have x2, which is six, minus x1, which is zero. So nine minus zero is nine, and six minus zero is six. So our slope is nine over six, but this fraction has to be reduced. Anytime you are using an answer, you're getting an answer, and you have a fraction, always make sure that that fraction is all the way reduced. How do we reduce a fraction? Well, we have to find the greatest common factor of nine and six. What that means is we have to find the largest number that can go into both nine and go into six, and that number is three. Once we find the greatest common factor, three, we divide the numerator and the denominator by three. So nine divided by three is three, six divided by three is two. So our slope is equal to three over two. So I'm gonna just put our information that we found, slope m equals three over two, and then b is equal to zero. Now that we have those two pieces of information, we can go ahead and fill in our equation. So our equation for our line is y equals mx plus b. So we're gonna keep the y equals, we now have m, which is three half x plus b, which is zero. We have our equation for our line. Because b is equal to zero, we can just drop that from the equation. There's no need to mention that we're adding zero at the end if that makes no difference to our answer. 
so we're gonna drop the zero and we're just gonna wait right <laughs> i got tongue twisted y equals three half x so that is going to be our equation for our line so we're going to go up to the problem and see d y equals three half x so that is our problem number three we're going to go into problem number four now and we're going to just take a breather we're not going to let these <laughs> letters and numbers and negative numbers confuse us we're just going to read the problem and we're going to do our best to solve it so question number four says there are three x minus two trees planted in each row of a rectangular parcel of land if there are a total of 24 x minus 16 trees planted in the parcel how many rows of trees are there in the parcel all right so it says that it's a rectangle it's a rectangular parcel of land we know that 3x minus 2 trees are planted in each row. We don't know how many rows there are, so this information we don't know. But we know that the total amount of trees that fill on the inside of this land is 2x, oh, 24x minus 16. Okay, so if I had a regular rectangle, and I'm just going to give you a for instance, if I had a regular rectangle, and I have one side, which is four. I don't know what the other side is, but I know that the area is 16, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, what is this unknown value? I will just take the area that we have, 16, and I would divide it by four, and I would get my answer of four. So, doesn't work out because it's a rectangle, but you guys get the point. It's whatever the area is divided by the one side so let's go ahead and try to see if we can do the area 24x minus 16 divided by the one side that we have 3x minus 2. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just break this in half and i'm going to look at one side at a time so 24x 24x divided by 3x is equal to, so 24 divided by 3 is 8, and then x divided by x, those x's would cancel each other out, they would be canceled, and I would just be left with 8. Okay, so 24x divided by 3x is 8. Let's try this other side. Negative 16 divided by negative 2. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. So it seems that both of these sides are being divided by 8. Is 8 an option here? Yes, it is. So let's go ahead and see if this works out. Let's see if we have found 8 as our value. If 8 times 3x minus 2 is equal to 24x minus 16. So we're gonna do eight times three X minus two, and we're gonna distribute the eight. So we're gonna do eight times three X. So eight times three X is 24 X, and then eight times negative two is negative 16. Look at that. We got 24 X minus 16. So our value of the number of rows on this rectangular part of land is eight right here okay so say for example that it was a little bit difficult for you to follow along with that example and say you're still trying to get the right answer but you're a little bit confused as to what to do i want to show you a last resort that takes a little while longer to solve this problem and i'm sorry it takes a little while longer to solve this problem but it may help you in a crunch so let's say, for example, the first row has 3x minus 2. So that's the first row of trees. Plus 3x minus 2, that's the second row of trees. That would be 6x minus 4. Okay, we're not at 24x minus 16 yet, so I'm going to add another row of trees. Okay, and that's 9x minus 6. That's three rows. I'm going to have to add another row, 3x minus 2. 
which is um, 12x minus 8. So that's four rows of trees. And then I'm going to add 3x minus 2, which is 15x minus 10. We're, that's five rows of trees, but we're still not at 24x minus 16 yet. So I'm going to add another row of trees. And that's 18x minus 12. And I'm going to add another row of trees, 3x minus 2, which is 21x minus 14. And I'm going to add one more row of trees, and I get 24x minus 16. So how many rows of trees did I have to add in order to get 24x minus 16? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 is going to be my answer. So what I need to encourage you is that we would love for you to be able to get the problem, the answer to the problem, by doing it the normal way, the way that it's expected of you. But when it comes to test taking, as long as you get the right answer, it doesn't matter what method you use in order to get to that right answer. And so if you are in a test and you have this type of problem, and the first way that I show you showed you doesn't come to mind, or you're struggling with it, just change your method. Try to find another way that you can try to figure out, okay, how many times does 3x minus 2 go into 24x minus 16? And if you need to just keep adding them together then you, and counting how many times you're adding them, then go ahead and do that. So thank you for watching my video. I would love to keep making more videos, so please like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you need help with. And I hope to see you again in my next video.